What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac from Big Bike BMX, and I'm here with my homie Craig. What's up, Craig? Yo, Isaac, what's going on, dude? Good to be back. And what a week, dude. It's been absolutely yeah. insane. Uh, it's the election time in the United States, and so uh, it's just been crazy. It's like, you know, we're just waiting on hearing on stuff. It's nuts. But, man, I have the best escape in the world for you tonight, Craig. You're not going to believe this. Man, I mean, I love surprises. Tell me what you got, homie. Don't don't keep me in uh, in suspense. So I'm not a Todd Lyons fanboy. Nah. But uh, we did we did score an hour of Todd's time tonight, um, and we've been trying to nail this down since before the hoedown. We've been trying to we've been <laughs> we've been threatening to do this interview and threatening to get Todd on. And Todd's finally like he goes, "Hey, man, I got time tonight," and we're like, "Then we're podcasting tonight." Yeah, so, I mean, I heard brakes screeching after that. It was like, <laughs> stop we had the presses, to. homie. We had to. So uh, without any further ado, uh, Craig, why don't you introduce Todd? Yeah, no problem, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Big Bike BMX podcast. You know who it is. You know who we got in the house. Isaac just said it, man. We have the director of SE Bikes himself right here with us tonight to go over some really cool stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Todd Lyons. What's up, Todd? Yeah, what's up, guys? Glad we could finally link up. <laughs> Dude, oh, yeah. I'm stoked. Um, man, so tonight, uh, we've, been, we've been talking about this for a while, talking about the collabs um, of uh, the SE Bikes collabs that you've done. Um, it, always, it always causes all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of chatter on social media when we talk about this stuff. And so we, I was just like, hey, man, let's talk about the bikes that you've done and let's give some history on some of these bikes because – there's people like me and, and a lot of our fans that, that, are, that are getting into uh, the big bike BMX scene, coming back to BMX. They may have missed out on a lot of the, the, like the last 10 years of what SE has been doing. Um, and so we wanted to just talk about like, we're, this is going to be a series of videos that we're going to do where we just cover uh, a, you know, one or two of the bikes that, that SE has done uh, collaborations on and just kind of hear it from Todd himself, what happened, how it happened. Uh, show some behind the scenes pictures and anything that that uh, he's got so you know without further ado Todd tell me what was what you know first of all just to lay the foundation Essie is no like you're not a newcomer to collaborations you know when I my, the first collab, collab that that I saw coming back in was was the dub ripper right so that's what sparked it for me I was just like what well what and you're like bro that's nothing new wait till you hear about this <laughs> How, how did the collaboration stuff start when, you know, when you took over SE? They started um, actually in 2000. The year was 2006. It's probably the end of 2005, but, but the year was 2006 for our 2007 model year. Um, and I had been, I got hired on as the product manager and brand manager in the summer of 2004. And, you know, I thought about doing, you know, some retro bikes, you know, but I was like, ah, you know, I, I was like, it'd be cool to do an old school classic bike, but man, you know, our, our factory's in Taiwan. At that time it was in Taiwan, it wasn't in China. You know, I was like, man, the old school heads aren't gonna go for it if, uh, you know, making a PK Ripper in Taiwan, you know? And it was like, fuck, you know, there's, 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 no, there's no manufacturing that assembles and produces complete BMX bikes in America, you know, it just does, doesn't exist, you know, and there's some little, you know, one-off things here and there, but anyway, so, you know, I was like, man, you know, and I was kind of struggling, you know, you know, yeah, it'd be pretty cool, you know, because I was only two years into like getting a customized or getting cus cus acquainted with SE, you know, I mean, I wasn't an SE head back in the day, you know, I was a BMXer, but I was never an SE head. And two years into working there and just starting to design the bikes and stuff, it was, uh, I was starting to hear people, you know, hey, you, you know, and back then it was probably on a, uh, um, MySpace or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> MySpace, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, myhose.com, I think it was called. <laughs> um, but anyway, you know, I was starting to get a little bit of, hey, you got, you should do this, you should do that, you know, and it was like, you know, I was just really hesitant, you know, like, like, man, I can't, you know, the only thing I know is working with this factory over, over in Asia, you know, and then the, the, anyway, I didn't, I didn't think it would fly. And then out of nowhere, got an email that came into like info at sebikes.com. 
and it was from Damon Way, who was actually the co-founder of DC Shoes. He started DC with Ken Block. Um, and I almost remember the email exactly. It was like, hey, my name's Damon Way. I do the DC thing. I'd like to talk to you guys about resurrecting the PK Ripper. And that was it. And I remember not responding to that email for weeks because I was the one I was like, you know, I was, I was like, is that really him? And I was like, ha, 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 you know, what am I going to get into? And then I checked with Robbie Miranda, who was actually, he's, he was a pro racer at the time that rode for DC. And he's like, fuck yeah, dude, that, that's, that's, that's the dude. That, that, that's the guy that, you know, started DC. I was like, all right, I guess I'll hit him up, you know? And anyway, so he hit me up or, you know, we talked and he was like, yeah, he's like, let's, let's bring back, you know, the PK Ripper, you know? So I really actually credit him to kicking off our retro line of bikes, you know? So, cause we hadn't done anything retro. Um, anyway, so in 2007, like I said, he was like, Hey, let's, you know, we're going to, we'll put a lot of effort in this, put our, we'll put dollars into it. We'll, we'll buy half of the supply, you know? So we ended up ordering 500 and they ordered 250. So it's like that, you know, DC took 250 right off the top, you know, and bought them from us. So it was like, instant sales back then that was big numbers and now you know anyway so so you know when the opportunity was there that they wanted to do something you know i i took it you know and we you know i had to educate the factory with what a loop tail is you know why we want this gusset you know and really you know because they were we already making pk rippers but they're race bikes and they weren't really besides the flowable tubing they really didn't have anything to do with the old school PK Ripper. So anyway, it was it was kind of a learning curve and an education curve more so of me explaining to the factory of what this bike needs to be and why it needs to be like that. And anyway, so fast forward to, you know, 2007 and we brought out the PK Ripper Loop Tail, which at the time that bike hadn't been available since, you know, the 80s. You know, so it was a really big deal that holy shit, SE is you know, because the first few years that you guys probably remember from the other podcast I did with you guys, you know, when SE came back, people were excited and they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know, for a lot of the bikes, you know, they were seeing like, man, that's not the SE I remember. So it was like, oh, here's our chance to, you know, really, really get that our credibility. Yeah, man, I was going to say, Todd, because that had to be like, you know, uh, maybe in, in your thought process at the time. I mean, were you thinking like this is a turning point? For the company, this could be something that is a one-off. I mean, did you see it like as the cornerstone or stepping stone to bigger and better things that may lead to other collabs? Um, well, how was well, that involvement with DC and your and your um, your design? I, I, and I don't think it was. I don't think I was like, holy shit, we can collab with this brand and that brand and that brand. That wasn't really on my tip tip of my head at all. I think it was more so retro bikes retro bmx you know because and i remember specifically i think you know redline maybe two or three years earlier they did a it was probably their 30 year anniversary i think or maybe 25 year anniversary at the time uh, or maybe 30 and they did like a frame set you know and it was like yeah. a one-off and they did it and it was cool and then they didn't do it you know they did it one, one time you know for their anniversary year so this was actually 2007 was our 30 years of radness or our 30 year anniversary so that fell into place where oh man we can bring it back our 30 year anniversary and then you know that you know how that product schedule works you know as soon as one one year is done you're already starting the next year you know and it was like so i immediately dove into the next year and, and we also had good communication with dc they wanted to do another bike they're like hey you know what we should do next we should bring out we should do something uh bring out the 24 inch uh, bring out a quad angle in a 24 inch size you know which had never been available you know so yeah there yeah there on the screen that's that's the first 20 inch dc pk ripper we did um but anyway they they said hey one they wanted to do another bike the second year they want to do a 24 inch quad um and then that next year we also did a the om flyer which was already in the line but it was some weird hybrid mountain bike thing but anyway then we turned that om flyer more into a retro bike and then the going into the third year with dc uh they said hey let's do a 26 inch quad angle loop tail you know chrome molly mm -hmm. double down tube 
and they also the uh fixed gear bikes fixed gear freestyle was the single speed fixed gear stuff was booming at that time um i mean we we were selling a lot of single speed bikes so so they said hey let's take the pk ripper and let's make that thing look just like a or sorry let's take a fixed gear bike and make it look like a pk ripper and that really that that bike people that 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 got us a lot of notoriety because all of a sudden now we're getting our name in this different culture not just bmx but this fixed gear single speed culture and not only that man it's so it's interesting that you brought that up because the collaboration didn't just lend it uh the, you know the design and the branding from dc to to marry with se but it also brought about the resurgence of the pk ripper it sounds like the quad angle and it and it, it, it also directly affected the design i mean we were making you know uh, bigger bikes you were making yep. newer bikes and and i think a lot of people think like when collabs happen it's just what 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 colorways are we going to put on what what branding are we going to put on and this lend itself to actual design changes and bike platform changes with se um through the collaboration with dc so that's pretty incredible yeah no 100 percent. and that was what i kind of uh I'm trying to think either put weight on my shoulders or prided myself. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but, but it was like, when, you know, that was my thing. It's like, if we're doing a collab, we're bringing some new shit out. You right. Know, that, that was what I wanted to do. Cause that's what we did with DC one. We brought back the 20 inch PK Two, We brought, we did a 24 inch quad, which had never existed. Three, we did a 26 inch quad that was, had never existed. And then we did a PK Ripper fixed gear that never existed. And then unbeknownst to most people, but, only the select few going into the fifth year, we were going to do a 29 inch quad because we did a 24, 26, and then we're going to do the 29. And I don't know, you, you probably seen the stories on, on, uh, from one guy on, uh, uh, the 24, 26, 29 group on, uh, anyway. So the first, the first 29 inch, um, the first 29 inch quad was going to be a DC bike. And, we had samples. I had the sample at my house and then DC changed ownership. They got bought by a, a really, um, I can't remember, but, but anyway, so some shit went down at DC and it, the, the, everything just kind of evaporated, you know, just, just stopped happening. So that was going to be the next quad. And then we actually ended up still making that quad the next year. We took the DC logos off of it and stuff. And we made it that copper quad. That was a 29 inch copper quad. Oh, right. Right. Um, but, not to get too far ahead, but, but the, um, moving, you know, when I was saying we did bikes, we, like a lot of times when we did a new bike, like I always love to do this collab with somebody with a new bike. So it's like, it's like, it's just more, more heat and more excitement. And then it's like, kind of give them not that they designed it. Cause I designed it, but like, like, Hey man, they, you know, they're, they're part of this, you know, this development. Anyway, but the net we did also in 2009 the first 26 inch PK Ripper loop tail with the hundreds, which is a yeah. which is a, a streetwear clothing brand. Um, but it was really weird because when we did that bike, there actually it didn't even say PK Ripper on it. It was like a, a white front and a black back of the frame, or I can't remember white, black, black, white. But it didn't even say PK Ripper, you know. But if you looked at the frame, you're like, wait a second, you know, that's yeah. a, you know, but you know what it like, was. Yeah, most people didn't though, you know, you know, cause you know, so, and then I kind of felt bad a little bit later. Like, why did I, you know, cause then I felt bad, like, man, that was the first one we ever made a 26 inch PK and they're like, you know, and it was like snuck under the radar, you know, did you get, do you get requests or like, at least when you like kick this off with um, DC, is it just like, cause obviously um, Damon way was like, you know, he wants the, he wants to have the resurgence of the, of the PK Ripper. Do they have, or do you give them like, any type of leash to um to have design input or is it is it more like we want to do this bike but then they leave it up to you to come up with well like design so, so if you go back if you're looking isaac if you're hunting around on those photos so i don't know if there's a 20 inch pk ripper in 2007 that you're seeing that basically we did two of them that year that first year we brought it back one of them was ball burner silver with black with with blue tough wheels and blue skin wall tires and blue grips and a blue seat blue decals and kind of a classic you know silver and blue yeah. and then there's a secondary one and that was the all matte black one 
and I never would have done, you know, I, I was like, fuck that. Why we're not going to do a retro bike and all matte black and gray. You know, that that's not old school BMX, but that was their theme for that year, you know, so, or that time period. So theirs was black and ours was silver, silver and blue. I'm hunting, um, I'm hunting for it. Give me a sec. You can probably find it, you know, if you go to the, uh, just the SE web, if you can't find it in there, the SE website for 2007, Bike Archives 2007, Retro, you'll find yeah, it. There we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, so, so, so they designed that, the black and gray colorway, you know, and they, and there was pads on that bike also that had the little, uh, their little, their, their yes. logo m- m- mashed in with our, with our wing logo. It was yeah, a repeat pet, a repeat they that, pattern. They had that famous F on it, right? The was that the was it DC? No, no, no I'm, yeah, DC. DC. Are I'm you, sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. I meant DC. Yeah. So, um, so and anyway, so that was the so the 20, 20 inch PK was matte black, you know, gray decals, and the next year the DC bike was a twenty four inch quad again, matte black, gray decals. The third year, when we went to the 26-inch quad and we went to the PK for fixed gear, they were on a neon kick, you know? So right, that's right. why, that is exactly why that 26-inch quad angle loop tail, the first one we made, was, our, our name for it was Tennis Ball Yellow. <laughs> and it was all yellow, yellow frame, yellow fork, yellow bars, yellow stem, yellow cranks, yellow seat, you know? and uh pretty you know crazy looking but then it also had in that same year was the what we called the cream sickle the 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 peak the peak airbird fixed gear that was a kind of a neon orange with white tires and white grips and and you really and had the at we used to put the our Auri, old school re grips on there um so yeah so they did direct that the, that colorway um but oftentimes when a brand, when we give them free reign to do something, what they come back with is usually pretty crazy and wacky and, and, and they'll put like letters on the tires or something, or they'll put, you know, they'll have some, their own grip, like, oh, that's a mold. We have to pay like $8,000 to open up the mold or, you know, anyway, so, so what we kind of learned our lesson. So we'll give them the file, but we're like, Hey, we'll, we'll take the first stab at it. And then it's a lot of back and forth though. It's definitely, it's not like we just take their name on it slap it on and we're done or, or vice versa you know yeah that's what i was thinking like you know did they and that was my next question too do they have designers or teams that will say hey look here's our thoughts on this obviously you guys go okay let's let's take the first stab at it here's here's the template and, and then now tell us what you what you're thinking and then you guys just back and forth it right yeah, yeah d- definitely every brand's a little different some of them are really involved every nook and cranny step of the way other brands are more like, Hey, you know, your market, you know, when um, you had, when you had, a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when you had D after the DC collabs were obviously taken off, you know, you got, you got bikes coming out and everything. What, what, at what point, or was there a point where other brands were, were reaching out and, and saying, Hey, look, we see what you're doing. We want to be a part of this. Or, I mean, were you, were you waiting well, in, for these people to come to you or these, these brands, or were you guys reaching out as well? We, out of that? Well, we so dc came to us you know and we did four years of dc stuff yeah and then we did the a couple of streetwear brands like the crooks and castles and the hundreds we did two of those in the same year and also looking back on that like man why did i do two of those the same you know so we had a dc bike crooks and castles and the hundreds you know all in the same year you know now it's like fuck we could do 10 in a year we got so many people hitting us up you know but <laughs> but at the time it seemed a little weird because these are two competing brands you're like yeah, i don't know they're competing competitor competitors but you know in the same space um but we and then isaac if you want to search around for mag there's magazine photos actually i'll, I'll finish in a second but but there's uh like when we did the collabs with dc dc was running two page ads in like complex magazine of the PK of the, of, of the, the quad angle, 20, 24 inch quad angle bike. You know, they were, they were, they did a launch party for the first bike. That was like, you know, Rob Deerdeck was there and who, I, 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 hundreds of people were there, you know? So yeah, there was, you know, there was a lot of, um, and go, go up one picture, go up one slide. That was the invitation. That was a full size uh, cardboard oh, cutout 
that was an invitation that got sent to people for the launch party. That's sick. and then and then also what we forgot to even talk about. Go up two more pictures is the DC shoots. You know, Ooh. so DC did a shoe two different two years in a row, a SE racing shoe. Um, you know, so that was okay. We're making the bikes. They made the shoes, and they also made some other clothing as well. Um, so yeah, that was a, that, that collab. Yeah. And I lost that. I had that shot. I lost that shirt. I don't even know where. Yeah. So there's a 30 year anniversary. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, that's West Chad K. There's a picture in there somewhere with me, me and Deer Deck. That was the first time I met him. And then from that, you know, the next year I ended up going to, um, you know, to Rob Deer Deck's house when they were filming. Yeah. Go up a couple more pictures. The red, yeah, there, there's Deer Deck. Um, when they when they're filming uh what you call it the uh robin, robin big Biggs. robin big tv show and then you know i think a lot of people know the story it's like so actually yeah, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself but behind myself somewhere myself um <laughs> the you know so we've got this relationship with dc we've done collaborations with dc for two years in a row and now i've met rob deer deck you know deer deck obviously works closely with kent with uh um damon way who is my contact at dc who is the head honcho at dc next thing you know i get a call from uh so in 2008 ish i get a call from uh, damon way and says hey you know what rob deer rob you know deer deck you know he's doing this tv show and at the time i didn't even hardly know what it was i think it was the first season so you know i don't even think i'd seen it before you know he's like hey and they're doing you know there's this really big black bodyguard you know it'd be really cool if you could, if you guys can make a big bike for him, just make, you know, make some crazy bike for him and we'll, we'll, we'll work it on the TV show. And that was the birth of the big ripper, you know? Um, and we made five of them and I took them to the, t I took them there to, to, to Rob's house during the filming, you know, for that me to, you know, take the bikes and they're racing them in the street and all that. Anyway, so that was actually, you know, the the birth, literally, the, of, of the Big Ripper. Those are the five, the first, actually, no, it's four bikes, the first four bikes there. And at this, if you flipped a couple more pictures, you know, the next day, they raced around at the house. And then the next day, we went to the Simi Valley BMX track, which that's Deer Deck there. Um, and the concept was, hey, let's take Todd out. Let's let's have Todd teach these guys how to race. And we'll do a race that'll be like a drag race. Where we'll have like a setup race of you know Big Black and Rob De and, and Deer Deck. And anyway, Deer Deck or not Deer Deck, but 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 uh, Big Black actually had some heart troubles, you know, because that's actually how he passed away. And he he actually collapsed that day and had to get taken off in the stretcher. You know, he didn't crash or anything. He just he just fell over and he had you know issues with his heart, which killed that day of filming. And then it killed the whole because the day before I was with them, I was talking. You know, it, anyway, it just took me out of the whole TV show. You know, be, be, <laughs> you know, but luckily it didn't take the bikes out. You know, because then it didn't make sense. Like, well, you know, because that was the whole concept. I bring them the bikes. We go back the next day. We go. Re go to the track yeah they still had footage of them actually um riding the bikes down rob's street in front of his yep. house they were like doing some street like sprints and stuff right exactly yeah yep, so. yep. and that was for that was from the day when i i gotta i make sure i'm gonna move my phone so my phone doesn't unplug but yeah no that was from the what you call it that was the uh, yeah that was the day i brought the bikes there okay awesome. all right so anyway yeah so the the branding we got from dc was i'm ridiculous you know what i'm saying like like, like I said, they're running ads and, you know, and two page ads of our bikes and magazines. They're doing these launch parties with, you know, up in LA for the bikes. They're, they're doing shoes with SE on them. They're introducing me to Rob Deerdeck. And then, and then you go back, go one more year past all of that. Then I'm at the fantasy factory. I'm there teaching Rob, Rob and, and his cousin drama, you know, I'm, I'm meeting Chanel West coast, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, how, you know, I'm teaching them how to do backflips in the foam pit. So, so the, the what's called it the uh um yeah the 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 brand yeah the branding and, and what we got out of out of you know working with dc was 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 incredible yeah that's that's the that's the launch party right there you know they rented out a huge place in la had you know a lot of you know people there it was it was really really awesome um and, and you know damon way who again was a co-founder of dc he really had a vested interest in old school bmx you know, so it was, it, it was, it was, a it was, it was a, you know, it was a true, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like they're looking 
to for this big marketing pre- ploy and to make money or whatever like at this this you know show it was a lot of you can see a lot of old, other old school bikes it was just like a old school museum party you know yeah it kind of seemed yeah. like it with him asking you if you want to research the um the pk ripper so it you know he was reaching out about you know bringing back a classic bmx you know the most uh the most important bmx uh platform in history the pk ripper um you know it seemed like he that was his vested interest like i want to bring this yeah. bike back and i want to do it with some dc flavor on it yeah exactly and, and he got it you know and and they never went overboard with like branding or anything like they're really it was really cool you know everything they did was really re- really top notch like i said we did four years and going on the fifth year there was a change of ownership there um and then it just got kind of weird and and i think he i don't know what happened <laughs> but but like <laughs> But oh, we had, so yeah, we had the, uh, you know, we like I said, with that that twenty nine inch quad was, you know, I guess you can credit that for you know for, for being a DC bike because, you know, we're like, holy shit, the big rip, you know, the big ripper's doing good. Let's let's do a big twenty nine quad. Yeah, for sure. Now you mentioned earlier because after DC you said Crooks and Castles and what was the other the brand the hundreds the hundreds. Yeah. So my question back, I don't know if you answered it, Todd. If you did, I, I do apologize, man. Um, but you you know, I was asking you like. Did you, how did, how did that relationship, or oh, yeah. you can speak it, was it something that you sought after, out or did they come to you like, well, we've seen what you do with DC. We want yeah. to be a part of this. So um, like h- how typically are these brands, like what's, we could use Crooks and Castles and, and that and the other. So um, the hundreds, yes. So hundreds. During, during that time of 2007 and 2008, fixed gear, uh fixed gear bikes single speed bikes were booming um we were one of the first brands actually to you know a lot basically in 2006 early seven a lot of like college students were taking their old road bikes and you know just making it a single you know single speed single gear easy functional you know um and they anyway so so i was tasked with hey you know actually this is kind of off topic but 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 it's all on topic but you know the president at the time of se's parent company you know i was in philadelphia a lot i used to go there for three four or five weeks at a time i had an i had an apartment there for five weeks or five no for three years anyway you know he's like todd go down to the local college and uh you know, walk around or ride, or go, go ride your bike there and look at all the, look at, you're going to see the, that TH is the hundreds. Um, but anyway, go around and look at all these single speed bikes. People are converting, you know, they're converting their 10 speeds into single speed bikes. And anyway, so he was like, you know, just make it as cheap as you can or not cheap and inexpensive. Make, make it like our, our Bronco, our Bronco kids bike, but make a single speed like that. So anyway, so it's kind of a long story, but it all makes sense in a second. So, so then we really put a lot of focus into this, you know, single speed fixed gear, you know, category. And now fast forward a couple more years in 2009 and fixed gear freestyle starts to become a thing, you know? So people are starting to do, you know, BMX tricks and BMX flatland tricks on their fixed gear bike. Um, and with that be that so when that's starting to happen you know some brands are making like a bmx style frame you know but it's 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 a bigger bigger size for the for the 700 c wheels anyway and i i can't remember exactly where we got linked up linked up with them but there's a guy named james banuelos he actually ran a clothing brand called us versus them us versus them is actually the brand is still around um, but anyway, so he ended up becoming our fixed gear freestyle team manager. And we had, we had a team of like five riders that were, you know, um, I think we even had them, had them on payroll, like just a couple hundred bucks a month or whatever, but you know, and fixed gear freestyle really started to boom anyway. So James also was really connected in the streetwear scene in, in LA. So he's the one that had the connections with the hundreds and crooks and castles. So he, he kind of brought them to us. I got you. I got you. So it was more like it was just it, it, it was meant to be because of the scene, the connection with the brand, um, your research, well, everything that kind of grouped together, they, plus your connections. Right. I yeah. Mean, well, they yeah they saw sense. what we, we were we had done for the last three years in a row with with D.C., you know, right, so right. And, and then it's like, oh, now we're working with a bit more of a core brand than, a, you know, than a Zoomies brand. 
Yeah, I mean, I was just wondering, like, how do how do these happen? Like, because I'm sure now, after years, I mean, I'm not trying to fast forward too far. I'm just saying now, you know, with obviously the collabs that that occur with SE and so many other um, uh, brands that are well, as associated, it's like I can't imagine you not getting hit up a lot from hey, no, yeah, we do. I've, everybody. I've <laughs> yeah, I've got a list, and sometimes it'll be like, hey let's talk again in a couple of years, you know, and then two years later, they're calling me back, you know, I mean, right. no ifs, ands, or buts, that's happened. So I've all, I've kind of prided myself also on, uh, or not myself, but the brand on, you know, we don't have a licensing team or a, or a marketing team that's going out and scouting brands and trying to pitch our brand to collab with their brand. You know, we, you know, we're not, we don't have a licensing manager that's doing that, you know, but you know, besides those hundreds and crooks and castles that James Banuelos was our team manager and he had that connection, he brought them to us. Every other collaboration, and I could be off by one, but I think every other collaboration, like 15, 16, however many more we've done, every single one of those brands has come to us, you know, which is, you know, cool. You know what I'm saying? And that's when you kind of know it's more of a true collab instead of you know, like, like they, they come to us, they want to be part of us and they want to, they kind of, you know, they're seeing what, especially now they're seeing what we're doing in the market and they're seeing, you know, our, our following and they want to be part of it, you know, cause it's, we're, we're a really, uh, I'm not core. What's the word for it? We're really, we're, we are really authentic, you know? So much like, here, here's the thing that, that really works. Like you understand, here's the thing. SE understands its audience really well. Um, you understand, you know, who, who your customers are and, you know, you deliver products that, that make us, I mean, we get, your fans are ravenous about this stuff. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we're, we're just on the tails of, of hoedown and you know what I mean? Like Craig and I had a, a whole podcast about like, is EPMD going to be like, we're playing music <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like it's, because here's the thing about SE, you never know what, what the collab could be. It could be music. It could be like a drink. It could be yes. uh, a clothing line. You, I mean, some of the stuff that, that, that you shared of like, oh yeah, there's a, a collab that didn't happen. Right. Um, yeah, and I won't yeah. mention any names, but um, you know, like there's some really random <laughs> you know, collaborations yeah. that you're like, wow, that came out of nowhere, yeah. but it, it, it is very pure. Did you, looking back at like just like the first dc collabs if you could put yourself in that headspace did you would you even imagine that you'd be collabing with you know and and i'm not giving anything away but like when you did dc did you ever think public enemy your favorite band is also going to be collabing <laughs> with you down the road not, we'll yeah. do that in a future podcast but yeah 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 no i mean no oh yeah i mean i mean you know working with uh you know, and, and NFL Super Bowl champion you know, or Super Bowl, you know, champion or you know, Marshawn Lynch and working with Travis Barker and then, you know, some you know, Dogtown skateboards and one of the most core skateboards and then Santa Cruz. Santa skateboards, Cruz, yeah. You know, one of the, you know, the you know, bigger ones. And then, and then, you know, we did stuff with Pabst Blue Ribbon. We've done stuff with uh, almost, yeah, I got to, I got to look, look at a list of, to remember them all. But, but yeah, no, we've done, you know, with, We've done some small stuff. We've done, you know, bigger stuff. Um, yeah. So we also used to have a policy and this started from the early days and this started from DC when DC said, Hey, whatever you buy, we'll buy, it. you know, we'll double it. So when we did that, actually that orange peak air per fix, no, 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 not the orange one, the, uh, the silver one. Um, the, the first year we did, and that was, Actually, yeah, that was 2009. So we did a silver and blue, again, ball burners blue, or sorry, ball burner silver and blue DC PK Ripper fixed gear. Um, if you're looking for the file, it's, it's, it's DC PK Ripper fixed gear. And you'll you'll see the two, the, the probably the beginning. But anyway, yeah. the so when we did that bike, they actually ordered a thousand from us. You know, that shows you how how much, you know, fixed gear, fixed gear, fixed gear, scene was booming and you know we ordered a thousand you know and so which back then was a lot nowadays that that's not that much in our in, in the se world um Are you talking yeah, about so, this one yep yeah, exactly so that was all that was that was the silver one and then they did again a, 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 a matte black you know kind of halfway murdered out um one which might be the more picture right before it you see yeah. it. um anyway so 
Uh, what was I talking about? I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were talking about the DC. Your, pol- uh, your policy. <clears throat> and the policy. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So when they were, you know, so year after year, they were matching what we ordered. So then we had, that was like our, in our agreement, you know, for, for a brand. You know, hey, you know, you've got to order 300 of this or 250 or something like that. And then, and a couple brands were okay with that. And then a couple weren't. And then it was like, you know, but after a while, we became so strong and that we didn't have to rely on that, you know? And I think it it may have been, maybe in Santa Cruz was one of the first ones. I think that was 2014. I think they're one of the first brands that didn't they bought like a hundred or something for more so for marketing um but they you know they weren't able to you know to buy that many but it was like but then it was like hey our sales are strong enough people are gonna fucking buy this bike you know but you go back to those days of the hundreds and the crooks and castles om flyer which if you find that bike pull that up um really clean looking om flyer with the with the white pet white frame and white quilt or white white pads anyway those bikes actually didn't sell that great and some of the collabs we did we only did like 150 you know so there's some bikes out there that are super duper limited you know that you don't see around at all can you give us an example of one of those todd like was the pbr that limited so here's the weird story about pbr so pbr paps blue ribbon that connection actually came from uh santa cruz the the guy at santa cruz introduced me to them I think he may have i don't think he yeah he it was at the complex uh or the agenda trade show in long beach that he introduced me to them um but he anyway so they wanted to do a bike um a production bike but then once we really were starting to look at the agreement you know there's the crooks and castles bike that thing was clean um but the agreement had basically that you had to be over 18 to buy the bike, you know, and <laughs> we had to make sure no oh, dealers yeah. sent it, to, sold it to anyone under 18 or maybe even 21. I can't remember, but it was like, fuck, we can't, you know, we can't do it, you know? And anyway, but then um, they were like, well, Hey, we want to, we want to do, do some for marketing. And, but they didn't want that many. And I was like, well, fuck, we can't do a full, we can't do a production run of that small, that small. So they only wanted 80 bikes. So, Luckily enough, um, if you pull up, well, yeah, if you, if you, if you, uh, so the 2010, I think it was 2010, was it? I can't remember. The OM Flyer, anyway, they, the year that they wanted to work with us, that, that I was like, dude, that's not enough bikes. Our OM Flyer that year was white, red, and blue, you know, and Paps Blue Ribbon colors are white, red, Same, and blue. Yeah, yeah. So what we did is we just basically took our production bike, uh, m- made some pads for it, made a seat for it made new decals and we took like 80 of our production and we you know instead of using our our seat pads and decals we created new seat pads and decals and that's where you know that's what it was it's basically near nearly almost our regular one but if you looked at it you saw the past blue ribbon you know um anyway and then so they wanted 80 and then i ordered an extra one for myself (laughs) So that was 81. And then the president of the company of the parent company wanted one. And then our designer wanted one. So that's where the the weird 83 number comes from. Do you think that's like the most um, unicorn collab bike of SE is the PBR? Like Um, the one that's been in production that, that, that was out there. Like, I know there's been one offs, but. Well, well, what's interesting about the PBR one is again, they were never for sale, you know, you know, so they were, you know, we didn't, we, we, SE, are, you know, our, we didn't sell any into our dealer network. They had 80 of them for, for shops. Um, and then they have a street team, you know, that goes, you know, their street team was riding them, you know, and of course people rode them and did whatever they need. And then they immediately then put them on eBay or sold them. So they were sold, you know, but they weren't officially for sale. So. Yeah. yeah Cause I seen one last year, <laughs> last year for sale on, um, on eBay and the first one I ever saw was at Damon Dayton shop. And I was like, what is that? Cause I'd never seen one. And then I happened to see one on eBay and I'm like, dude, this has got to be the most like unicorn SE bike <laughs> that exists. Yeah. Costs, more than my, costs more than my Hummer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure I still have the sticker set, pad set and seat 
in, in my garage somewhere. So it's like, you know, cause, cause I'll, before I was, man, this, this, you know, cause I, that bike was selling for like 2,500 bucks or some shit like that. You know, oh, like, no shit. I like, man, if somebody's got an OM flyer. I'll give, I'll give them the seat pads and, 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 you know, and back then that was even before, you know, now everyone can just, you know, not everyone, but there's quite a few people that just, you know, can make up, make, pat, make decals relatively easy. And now people are making pads and seats. So, so it's, so it's easier to, to recreate stuff nowadays or, or get it recreated by somebody. That's crazy, dude. Like, do you, of those early collabs, do you have a favorite, like from the DC, from the DC, you know, years, do you have a favorite bike? that you're just like that is a dope bike i i like the pk Ripper fix gear you know that was you know we that was the first we were the first company and we've been a lot of the first company but we are the first company to make a, a, a bmx style fixed gear mm -hmm. um there were other like you know even fbm you know the core freestyle company they were making fixed gear frames at, at that time you know, but they never made a complete bike. So we're the first brand to make a complete bike that was a fixed gear, you know, that mimicked a BMX bike. And it didn't just mimic any BMX bike. It mimicked the most classic BMX bike of all time. There, there's you know? a video. There's a video of you on YouTube um, at Interbike talking about the fixed gear, the creamsicle. And I want to okay. say that there's another one. I haven't seen you so fired up and excited. Like you could just, you could hear the, you could hear how proud you were of that bike. Like just hear, hearing you talk about it. I remember I talked to Craig that night and I was like, God damn it. I want a fixed gear bike now. If you see a creamsicle well, bike, grab it. Well, I, uh, so the orange one was the second year. That was the second year we did it. Um, but I actually, I, I rode, I rode it at, as a fixed gear, you know, cause it had a flip flop hub. You could have free wheel or fixed gear, you know, I rode it as a fixed gear one time and I made it one mile before bunny hopping up a curb and then flipping over my handlebars and, and breaking my collarbone. <laughs> so I was like, I want fucking <laughs> nothing to do with the fixed gear. And I knew, I always knew, I think, man, I, I, cause I was riding, we had another bike called the logger, which was a fixed gear free yeah. fixed gear or single. Anyway, I rode that as a single speed all the time. And I got the, then I was like, Oh, let me try it with the fixed gear. And certain, I mean, I bunny hopped up the curb. It wasn't like I clipped the curb, you know, but sure enough, you know, wasn't ready for that back pedal to be coming and flipped me over, broke my collarbone. Uh, it was just the most classic dumbass, you know, like, 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 like Todd's like, like flip flop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to run the free wheel. Anyway, yeah. So even though I say I like the fix, I like the peak air for fixed gear, I don't fucking like riding the fixed gear. You know, I ride, I rode it with the free wheel all the time. And I actually have, I have uh, two of them still in my garage. And I was like, man, I'm never going to get rid of those because we'll, we'll, we'll probably never make them again, you know. But now it's like, you know, the big ripper, you know, takes what that bike was, you know. And now the fast ripper really takes what it was. It's like, oh, man, this is a cool looking bike. It's fast. It's functional. You know, it's like, well, shit, now the big, you know. But now it's like, why would I ride that bike with them skitty ass tires? <laughs> it, it's I, I so I, I owned a logger for uh, for a minute um, and I gave it to my boss. My boss needed something to get around town. And um, I, I'll be honest, it's, it's super comfortable. Uh, looking at those little tires gives me so much anxiety <laughs> that I couldn't, I couldn't ride it. Um, but I was the same way, man, because it's set up as a fixed gear. Like he set it up fixed gear. And I if you think fixed gear riding is easy, um, go ahead and just go grab one real quick <laughs> and, and try and slow down. Just try and right. slow down. Yeah, strap your feet in. It's fun for about, go for it. It's fun I, for about ten minutes, and then yeah. there's there's zero chill on a on a fixed yeah. gear. Like there is no chill. <laughs> I was never able to do a skid or anything. Like never once. You know, I was I tried a little bit. I, was like, I don't like this. I don't like you know. Anyway, then then like I said, broke my collarbone. I was like, I really don't like it now. <laughs> yeah, hard um, pass. But like I said, that was during the days of of you know the you know like I said, we had a fixed gear freestyle team. You know which you know, which was cool for a bit. Then it was the corniest fucking shit ever, you know, because it just, the whole fixed gear just, it was like, uh, the fixed gear boom also kind of died off, but a bit more steady, but the fixed gear freestyle, I mean, there was, there was freestyle contests with launch ramps and like, you know, little, you know, all this little boxes. Anyway, it kind of like an old school, old school, you know, street contest, which is kind of cool, but it was like, you know, interesting, but anyway, but, but that whole scene just came and went in a blip of a radar or blip on the radar. But anyway, I'll finish my talking about that bike. So 
when we developed that bike, that P Camper fixed gear, the fixed gear freestyle wasn't really happening yet. In the fixed gear freestyle was Flatland tricks. And by the time our bike came out, then dudes were were jumping downstairs. They're putting pegs on and grinding and they're doing, you know, shit like that. And a lot of people broke the the P Camper fixed gear frame, just snapped it right in the center of the down tube, you know, like snapped them in half. Um, because we didn't, you know, we really didn't, you know, cause you think you take a BMX bike, it's this big, you make it a fixed gear bike. It's like twice as big. And that tube is so long and so much more stressed. And we really didn't do anything to reinforce it because when we developed it, that didn't exist. Hey, you're, you're all supposed to be doing flatland on this. You guys, <laughs> you know? well, no, no, but flatland, the flatland stuff was all right. You're not supposed right. to jump down fucking curbs. Right. Anyway, so, so a lot of people actually, I forgot, broke them at the seat tube because you think you're on a fixed gear. Anytime you do a little bit of a jump and you land, you're slamming on your seat, you know, cause they have to be pedaling and they bounce off their, they bounce off their seat all the time. Anything they did, they bounce off their seat. And anyway, so that next year when we, that, 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 uh, uh the cream the orange one when we made the orange one that year we actually reinforced it but the first year a, a lot of them broke yeah man if you got if you guys want to see someone riding a fixed gear and jumping off things like roofs and stuff man go check out uh jacob santos's uh fixed gear videos um you'll see what todd's talking about man they beat the hell out jacob beat the hell out of that bike and uh you can kind of kind of get a gauge on the the punishment <laughs> I'm going to share yeah, it real so, quick. You can see that the reinforcement there. Is that, this is one in the back, right? Where? Yeah. Well, no, it was the tubing is internal, the tubing, you know, but then also the, uh, you know, we did, that was actually, I think, was that the second or third year? Maybe, you know, we did, we did another year that was a black, a black and chrome bike, but it wasn't a DC bike, but no, we, we just reinforced, you know, the tubing was thicker. It was budded. Um, you know, those forks though, I think we had like heat treated forks on those, you know, after a while as well. Those bars are dope, though. The bars are a yeah. trip. Yeah. I like the front load stem, too, by the way. That's cool. Yeah, that was that was actually as an Af Affix. What was it called? The, there's a brand called Affix, A-F-F-I-X. It was a really unique stem that you didn't even see the stem bolts. Um, oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Let's bring up another bike. Isaac, we got any more that we can look at? Or Oh, dude, I've got a gazillion bikes. In yeah, I know, man. I want to see if some you, if you flip through the, because uh, I can, if, if which can one do you want to see, Todd? Well, if he has it where I can, where before I was able to see the screen, now all I see yeah. is you. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring up a bunch of pictures, and then we can just kind of go through it. So, I got some powerpoints too. I don't know if that would be interesting. Let's see. Could be. I'm just going to, all right, Todd, I'm going to start at the top and we're just going to flip through a ton of pictures and you could just say, stop, go. Cause there, you right. guys, this, this may be the only time you'll ever see this stuff. It's amazing. That, 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 yeah. This is stuff that's deep in my computer. All right. Hold on one second. So yeah, the first one was the black, it was, it was the shoe. This is actually, we did a collaboration with the standard, which is a hotel in New York and LA. The great hotel. hotel, great hotel. Sure you, you heard, yeah. So, so this was actually the D. That was the peak air for fixed gear that we uh, repurposed for D, for the the hotel. And basically, when you stayed at the hotel, you were able to take out one of those bikes. Like they bought them from us. We put the standard logo on it, and that was a cool little collab. You know, kind of a one off collab. You know, that we did with the standard hotel. In LA, do you, have you been to the one in LA with the ping pong? They have all those ping pong tables. I've been, I've been in the ping pong in Thailand. Oh, <laughs> it's that's a it's whole crazy. different hotel. Over there. <laughs> I don't think they right. give you a bike there. DC Fixie Ripper. Yeah, that that was like early drawing for it. Those forks, though. Yeah, no, that like I said, that's just an early drawing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the uh, so go back. So all of our, uh, all of our limited edition individually numbered bikes will have the serial number on the inside of the rear dropout, um, which usually is every PK Ripper, you know, 20 inch that we've done or 26 inch that we've done and every Chromoly quad we've done, which is 20, 24, 26, 29. Um, you know, we, we do the when it was said when if you see where it says the the frame description says individually numbered 
that means it's numbered on the inside of the rear dropout. And it usually has, what does that say? It says DCPK. X, and then, X, X, yeah. Yeah, so 001, 002, 003, and so on. You'll see an example of it here shortly. Some DC shoes. There it is. Yeah, that was that was the first year. We never did it like that again, where that was kind of like a stamp, more 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 so than a, you know, than I mean, Mark, that was like a that, printed that, thing. Yeah, it almost yeah. looks like a decal almost. But yeah, but a, it was under clear coat. It wouldn't come away. But yeah, we didn't do that. We didn't do it like that again. The other ones were all stamps. Yeah, I got a twenty four inch. Um, quad and it's stamped on the inside of the of the rear dropout so yep i want that tough wheel picture right there that's dope yeah that is cool uh shout out to drop right there drop curb dogs <laughs> yeah yep Oof. yeah this this might be a lot of pictures from the uh, party this is this is this is all from that that launch party you know which was pretty awesome that's Damon. That's Damon Dayton. No, Damon Dayton. <laughs> Damon Way right there. <laughs> yeah. That bike is sick, though. That flat black. Which Damon Way is Danny Way's brother, if, if people didn't know. The I didn't thing. know that. I thought I was like, Way yeah. has to be, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've, seen the, second, I've seen these second. shoes in your, uh, on your Instagram, right? You yep, posted yep, these a couple yep. times. Yep. That was the invite. If anybody has one of those, uh, send me a picture of it on Instagram. The uh, the invite. I want to see what it looks like now. I've got it. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's see. All right, give me a sec. I'm gonna grab some more pictures here. Todd, just looking at those um, those DC shoes, the the collab with the shoes and stuff. Um, do you recall what the uh, what the run was on those? Like uh, the numbers? No. no, no. I still have like fifteen pairs or so of them. Not in your size, though. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't um, getting there. But, <laughs> but well, well, so I mean, so we could. I'll fit, so, bro. I'm just saying. I'll stretch those. I'll suckers. squeeze right so, in. Hell yeah. So first of all, it was super awesome, you know, that they did SE shoes, you know, the, and S said, you know, PK Ripper on the back and SE Racing on the tongue, and then the wing on the sides. But when you open that shoe box, you know, you know, every shoe box has that thin, I don't know what you call it, that thin paper that paper. separates the shoes. Yeah. Tissue paper. That tissue paper, when you took it out and you open it up, it was the drawing of the PK Ripper frame. You know, it was the original drawing, you know. Damn, details. So that's cool. Number two, also in there was a copy of Joe Kid on a Stingray that was repurposed and put in a new... Uh, a new a new case and in that case had like about 25 pages of bmx history and se history and dc history so they really went all out you know there's there's a tongue you know shout out to mark eaton for uh joe kid on string ray yep yep yeah he yeah he helped with you know line that up with them having that what seat is this is that that just, uh... that's the hundred seat that's that's if you look closely it's got the uh they had like a print on the frame that was like it was like a jagged print if you look close oh you can see it yeah yeah it's, it's like you a, can see it yeah it's, it's like yeah i'm i'm trying to find a picture there like you could see some of the the uh the hundreds bombs that looked it's just sick. oh yeah the drawings. so did you did you see the picture that popped up on uh uh a major, major uh, uh, stream, not streaming, but social media recently, um, uh, like Baller Alert and uh, what's the other ones I'm looking for? Sport, it was like Sports Center or whatever, but there was some sort of story with, with about LeBron James just like a week and a half ago. And LeBron's wearing the hundreds SE Racing shirt in the picture, you know, because yeah. you know, it was some story. And, they, and they, for whatever reason, they used a picture of LeBron, an old picture from like 10 years ago. <laughs> I didn't see that, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Look at that dropout. Yeah. So this, so so this, so when you go back pretty far, like far enough, like in the in the two thousand six, seven, eight, nines, basically the the designer, the graphic designer over in Taiwan at the time, she basically that's the that that wait go back go, go back, back. Yeah. that's the that's the freestyle quad angle frame when we when we made the freestyle quad angle so. And, you know, so they were using, okay, just for reference, you know, let's use, you know, we'll use the frame, but anyway, but there's a lot of bad drawings like that, where you're like, holy fuck, I don't want that thing, <laughs> you know, like, no, 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 the bike's not going to look like that. Don't worry. 
Yeah, in graphic design, we always template stuff out. Like <laughs> you've got to reinvent the wheel. You just got to show what's what it could look like. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to hold on one sec. I'm going to find the, well, you guys keep talking. I'm going to find that hundreds picture. Cause I, I, the, the graphics on that hundreds the, that I saw was just sick. Yeah. The, uh, like I said, they, you know, the, that picture of LeBron, um, LeBron, it, it just popped up like a week and a half ago. And I was so busy. I forgot to even like repost it on Essie's social media or my own, but I'll do it sometime soon. Um, but it's an awesome picture of him. It's like it's LeBron James with, and, and you see it says, and instead of SE racing, it said SE ripping, and it was our bubble logo, our main, you know, cloud bubble logo um, that had their bomb logo, you know, merged in with it. You know, I got to say one of the, I hope Isaac gets to this in a minute, but um, after he finds uh, what he's looking for, but you know, the, the bike that, that you guys did with um, Travis Barker, the famous. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah got to be one of my favorite i mean this for me it was like the santa cruz obviously that's like my that's the bike that i would love to own i can't find one i've tried <laughs> i've searched all over the globe they're there but not a lot of people are giving them up um but that famous bike man there uh, th that was such a cool collab i mean everything from the graphics to everything um on the yeah. bike you know yeah, it, that that uh, i liked it I mean, I maybe it wasn't flashy enough for me, you know. I mean, it was it was cool. I liked it, you know. But that, yeah, that that's number. I'd say yeah, number one and number two when people talk about their most wanted bikes, it's Santa Cruz and Famous. Yeah, you know, I mean, so. it, it it is for me for sure. I mean, because you did get the flash, and you got you know you got a, a, the Santa Cruz really sticks out. Cause that's Santa Cruz, man. You think of the graphics throughout the years of their skateboard designs on their decks and everything, you know, it just screams out at you, the screaming hand. Um, you guys got to, you know, you work that into your graphics, the, that, that blue on the, on the Santa Cruz bike just pops with all the, the, the scallop yeah, yeah. Uh, designs and famous, <clears throat> the Travis, the Barker bike, man, that, that just, that really kind of tied into not only famous, but you know, Travis's likes, you know, the way he like, his, the way his clothing the way he you know with, yeah, yeah. with music and everything so it did fit his you know his personality as well as the brand so what's cool there is travis you know travis did ride bmx bikes and he collects bmx bikes you know so so he's down with bmx you know and he's you know i actually we talk you know occasionally on on more so text or whatever on you know instagram you know, but he's, you know, he's, you know, he'll send me a picture of him doing a wheelie or something, you know, and, you know, we got bikes for his, you know, his kids a while ago. And, um, but yeah, I guess, you know, that bike was quite a while ago, but yeah, he's still, you know, he's still, he's still down. Um, yeah, no. and, and then to give a side note of Santa Cruz, you know, Santa Cruz, you know, is, um, you know, there's Santa Cruz skateboards. Then there's also the sister company, Santa Cruz bicycles and about, two or three years ago, I don't know the whole story, you know, but Rob Roskop, you know, from, you know, he's, he's, he's does the Santa Cruz bikes. Um, but anyway, I, I don't know the whole story, but they were kind of separate before, you know, so when we did Santa Cruz skateboards, did a collaboration with a bike brand SE, it was no issue, but now those brands are merged together more, more, you know, so uh, it was probably a couple of years ago. I talked with my, my contact at, at Santa Cruz, which he's, he's the one that hooked me up with Paps Blue Ribbon. He's hooked me up with some other brands. You know, he's, he's actually, he's the licensing manager at Santa Cruz because Santa Cruz skateboards, they're doing stuff with the Simpsons, you know, Burger King, you know, they, they do a shit ton of collabs and that's his job there. So when you did the collab with Santa Cruz, was that based on Rob's, Rob Ross Cops, um, Santa Cruz mountain bikes or the, or the skate? Apparently. no no definitely 100 the skate side skate yeah side. yeah okay because i was gonna say same font yeah. same yeah. same yeah. designs yeah. but same jeff phillips like think, hand right yeah jeff like, phillips hand. hand yeah the screaming yeah, but i think i think the story that's coming together that i'm trying to say is i think they i think actually oh yeah just take two seconds to google it but i don't got time but but i think santa cruz skateboards or the scan santa cruz bike brand got bought recently by by an um another bike like a major bike brand i think hmm. um or funded or whatever and then with that this, anyway so so santa cruz skateboards and santa cruz bikes are more together now and anyway so and then they, they got bought by another bike company i believe anyway it's just so now there's a conflict of interest you know so so don't count on us doing 
having a Santa Cruz. The Santa like, Cruz too. Yeah, exactly. The, the 2.0 is probably yeah, not yeah, happening anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that that was Damn. a discussion like a year or so ago. And, Damn. And, <laughs> I, I love that. I love when when the, the marrying of, of like the Dogtown, the Santa Cruz, you know, I, I love that stuff, man. Anytime I see uh, like the two the two different genres from my youth come together, I think it's dope. I, I can't get over it. You know what I mean? I think it's the sickest thing ever. It is, but man. And I can tell you this. I love I have a Dogtown and with the skateboard, I got the the skateboard with it, obviously. And my love for bikes and skateboards growing up, I mean, I got both of those in that in that collab. And I think that's the dopest thing to do, you know, is like have the bike, but also the accessory to go with it, if you want to yeah. say it like that. So when we did the Santa Cruz bike, that actually, you know, um, if you open up the bike box, there was a skateboard in there, a skateboard deck, you know. So that bike was packaged with the skateboard deck which was an unbelievable uh, internal hassle for that to happen, you know, um, not on it, basically just the, uh, the logistics of it. And, and this, and the, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the word, but anyway, so our bicycle factory, you know, and the Santa Cruz skateboards made over in China, you know, everything's like everyone, everyone thinks everything, everyone, or a lot of the haters think, the only thing that's made in China are SE bikes, you know, right. <laughs> but Hey, you know, that Santa Cruz skateboards made in China, you know, a lot of core BMX brands bikes are made in China. But anyway, I have a post for that. You guys are going to get a kick out of the post. I'm going to do you'll keep an eye out for it. But yeah. anyway, so that wooden skateboard deck that we wanted to package in the bike box, one, we had to change the packaging and stuff, but two, because it's wood, our factory wasn't allowed to warehouse it, you know, because of this, the import, you know, the, imp the Im importation of a wood product, you know. So that skateboard deck had to get shipped from you know, somewhere else in China where it was made, the Santa Cruz factory, to a third party warehouse. And then I think they even had to, when they put the skateboard in the, in the bike box, it had to go to another warehouse you know, and then they could put it anyway. Then when it got shipped in, then we had to have other documentation because there's a wood product. No longer is it only a bike. And anyway, it was it was it was a big hassle, but we were obviously able to make it happen. But you know, we were like, okay, we're never fucking doing that again, yeah. right? Because you're, you're just looking at like whose idea was it to put the fucking skateboard in there? You know what I mean? Because at the time, you'd be like, that's a dope idea. Make it happen. Green light it. Yeah, and then yeah, you're like, wait, now there's three factories involved. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, and you know, you, you know, you know, the internet peanut gallery, you know, that can say, well, "Dude, why didn't you guys do this? Why didn't you do that?" It's like, uh, l l let me tell you, <laughs> you know, I'm part of that guy, gallery. I'm, kind of I'm part of that gallery, so I respect, <laughs> I respect that gallery. But uh, <laughs> it's cool to hear the the inside story on stuff like that. Like, um, as far as like collabs, is there ever like you know the Santa Cruz skateboard that came with the deck, the Dogtown? Uh, is there ever been you know other like little goodies that they get added? Uh, that are not part of the bike with collaborations? Um, yeah. Um, well, I mean, DC, you know, had the shoes. What the sho did, it, did it come with a, did it come with a pair no. of shoes? Okay. No, 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 no. Um, and then, uh, fuck, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm drawing a blank. So, so Famous did a couple shirts. They did at least a couple of shirts, not too much. Um I'm drawing a blank on all the clubs. I wish they would have done a belt buckle. Uh, Travis, you don't know me. I'm a big fan. I've got two famous belt buckles, and I have a famous belt that doesn't fit me anymore because I'm a fat guy now. But uh, <laughs> please make an SE. Please call Todd and make an SE belt buckle. Please. Oh, yeah. Isaac so, just wants right. to know. He wants to know if the PBR came with a six pack or a ring. I'm just curious. <laughs> like, just saying. You know what I mean? Can we get a Can we get a collab with Truly? <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i gotta go in a minute but the um you know when we did well beast mode every year i mean they only do like a t-shirt or two you know but they have the shirt actually they did a sweatshirt they did a couple sweatshirts but they'll have that come out in their store the weekend of the of the oakland ride out you know so they'll sell a lot there you know but they don't really stock it all year or anything um i do sorry but yeah so so yeah beast mode you know beast mode did you know s you know some soft goods 
Uh, yeah, like I said, I got to go in a minute, but I, I, just to kind of set the tone for stage two of the collab talk, um, you know, there's another brand called 10 Deep that we actually didn't work with. We almost did. Um, we did stuff with the Agenda Trade Show, which I think is now the Com Complex Con Trade Show, I think. Um, uh, but there for the Agenda Trade Show, we did a one off bike with Starter, you know, Starter hats and jackets. Oh, I know Starter. Yep. Um, we, let's see here. Um, we did, oh, the other skateboard company. All right, I'm going to quiz you. What, what three skateboard brands have we done collabs with? Santa Cruz, Dogtown. Santa Cruz, Dogtown, and, uh, man. Creature. 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 Oh, creature, creature, creature. Dude, yeah. Creature okay. was a, was a SoCal flyer frame with Skyway tough wheels. It was black with green tough wheels, a really, really unique bike, but it was a 24 inch and nobody wants a, you know, nobody wants a 24. Um, so Creature, yeah, they didn't do any clothing. Um, we did a collab with a clothing brand about a year and a half ago called Cult of Individuality. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. They did clothes. We didn't do any bike. We did we did two or three one-off bikes, like literally like three bikes. It wasn't a production run or anything. We just restickered them and repainted them. But uh but they made, you know, jeans. There's SE jeans out there with the SE logo. They're you know, that are like three hundred dollar jeans, you know, stretchy jeans. There's a really nice jacket, there's a sweat pant, really, you know, there's a tracksuit. Yeah, yeah, it's really awesome stuff, expensive, high-end stuff, you know, but with SE logos on them um like i said we can talk about go deep into all this stuff next time and yeah. then you know dub magazine you know or dub, the dub show that was you know they they don't really have any soft goods or any product their product is their trade shows and their magazines um so they didn't make anything uh se and then we have the famous stars and straps um and then golf wang um you know tyler the creators you know that's another famous person you know, we're talking about we're working with famous people tyler the creator um who rides you know, who you know, rides yeah, oh yeah he's he, yeah, he's a rider he, yeah he we're actually in the yeah about to make a one-off bike for him um and not not make it for him but but re, make, we're, we're gonna we're gonna make a custom bike for him you know and then in the coming months but yeah dude if if when when his people or he hits me up and he wants five bikes i send him five bikes he hits me up two weeks later and he wants 10 bikes i send him 10 bikes you know because all of a sudden boom, they pop up in a music video or, or they pop up, you know, all of a sudden he's riding on stage in a, in a concert on it or all of a sudden, you know, ASAP Rocky's on a bike. You know, like, oh, where'd he get the bike? Oh, fuck, he probably got it from Tyler, you know? It's, you know, right. all of a sudden, right. uh, you know, Frank Ocean. All of a sudden there's a picture of him doing a wheelies with Frank Ocean down the street. Oh, Frank's on an SE, he's on an SE, you know? So, yeah, and he's just super down and he loves bikes, you know, he's, yeah, um, he... He, yeah, he put us in touch with um, Pharrell recently. You know, we sent Pharrell two bikes. You know, I was on the phone with fucking Pharrell, you know, Pharrell. <laughs> you know, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's been a lot, a lot of- I remember uh, I woke up one Saturday and saw Tyler, the creator, doing a surfer. And then I was like, what? And then I Googled it to see if I could find a better version of it. And I found a, like a video of Pharrell. Him and Pharrell. Who, Pharrell yeah, him and Pharrell. Like <laughs> Pharrell's teaching him how to do surfers. Yeah, <laughs> and if you look if you look back at like nerd n e r d uh, lap dance video, you can see Pharrell uh, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, you know, BMXing like this isn't new for these guys. You know, yeah, so yeah. it's they're they're down for they're down for bike life. Pharrell actually he he's like part owner or investor in Brooklyn Machine Works, which is which is a frame company. You know, uh, America made frame company up yep. in Brooklyn. Yep. Um. Oh, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, Oakley, Oakley glasses, you know, obviously we never did a bike with them, but, but Oakley, we had SE Oakley gloves, Oakley's made glasses for, you know, SE racing Oakley glasses. Wait, um, wait, wait for it. Hold on. <laughs> there we yeah, go. Look at that. Good. Would you, would you do a collab with uh, Oakley? Yeah. Yeah, we would, but they they've changed kind of on, yeah, there's a lot, you know, it, it's, it's always interesting with them, but, but. But yeah, an Oakley bike would be a home run, you know. But I don't, yeah. you know, they're not at, they're not asking us for that. I'm gonna throw a couple um, names. Swatch, would you do a Swatch watch? In the '80s. <laughs> hey man, Swatch we, watch would be dope. Or Nintendo. This is what Todd's inbox is like all the time. Hey man, uh, yeah, yeah. Could you do yeah. a? 
And they're Let all me for me. You. They're all for me. I just make different Gmail accounts. <laughs> Let me add you to this spreadsheet. I got a I got a, yeah, I got a spreadsheet of people. Um uh so Oakley for our 30 year anniversary back in 2007, we came out and I that might have right here. Um you ready? Uh, yeah, I've seen these. I know what this is. God damn it. Talk, Todd. Talk, 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 talk. These are the frog skins. S E Oakley. Let me get if I can get it right here. SE logo frog skins. <laughs> so yeah, so so we they made these and these were never for sale. They only made them for us. They made like 200 pairs for us. We never sold them. We gave them away. Um, you know, and I still got some. <laughs> anyway, and and then and then fast forward another nearly decade or over a decade, and then we did the the ones you're wearing, you know, and I yeah. I only give them to people I like. <laughs> um <laughs> obviously i got mine before todd knew me really <laughs> yeah he didn't even know you then huh yeah oh, wait a second <laughs> maybe i shouldn't send say anything back. send him back <laughs> um what else did we do oh we did something with i uh, know we didn't the official brand that's nothing um uh we yeah so next time i've got a lot of stuff yeah. that never happened and i can kind of give you some you know a little bit of background so paps blue ribbon uh, we did a, something with the with Huff Huff clothing brand that that was kind of a one off thing. Um, That's what we uh, should do in the in the next uh, episode, Todd and Isaac. We should do a uh, we should go over a brand or a collabs that didn't that didn't happen. Yeah, it, not, like as much as much as you can. Yeah, that are not under non disclosure. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't get any more nasty phone calls or emails. Nah, man, <laughs> we don't need you. We don't need that for so, you. Todd, I would, I'll talk to you all night long, but I also don't, uh, I'm also deathly afraid of your wife. Um, and so I don't want to, I don't want to get on yeah. your wife's bad yeah. side. All right. I even have a folder here on my computer or a folder that says Kanye West. <laughs> that, that, was a, that was one that, that was, a, yeah, we'll just leave it. At that. Oh, the, the teaser right there at the end, bro. Yeah. All right, guys got to go, but I got a Kanye West folder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah see you next yeah. time yeah here's something i can't tell you about kanye west <laughs> yeah yeah all right um, man well let, yeah. let's let's uh let's let's talk again in a week if if we can this is why i'm trying to make your wife like get on her yeah. Day, like yeah, yeah i promise yeah. an hour so uh and i went over it by 10 minutes so uh dude if all we right. can hang out in a, in a week let's do another recap we'll we'll come in we'll talk about what you know I'll do this for as long as you have collab okay. bikes you want to talk about. We'll keep doing this. All right. right. All right. And I'm down. And my question to you, are you guys coming to the SoCal BMX ride? Hashtag. The Indio ride. No, December 12th, the down the coast. Oh, he's talking, he's talking about yes. the 50 a day, bro. You're no, but I'm, re I'm restructuring it. It's actually going to be 30 miles a day. I'm already kind of mapping it out. I'll, I'm going to post a graphic tomorrow, but it'll be downtown LA across to the coast to Santa Monica, Santa Monica down to Redondo. We'll, we'll all stay in hotel or something right on Redondo or hopefully right at the beach. And then we leave that next day, which would be a Saturday. So Friday, that, that was a Friday. And then Saturday, we leave Redondo and we go around Palos Verdes and San Pedro into Long Beach. That's another 30 miles. Um, get to Long Beach and we all stay downtown Long Beach. And then on Sunday we wake up and then we continue down the coast from Long Beach through Seal Beach, through Huntington Beach, um, through uh, whatever other, Corona Del Mar, and then finish in Laguna Beach. And it would be super awesome because we're just going to take the coast the whole way down, you know? We're going to take the SC chopper back. Is that what we're doing? Well, the what? <laughs> I, I was just messing with you, Todd. I was just saying we we're going to take the SE chopper back, you know, the yeah. Learjet. Oh, yeah. Well, well, that was that was the issue. My other idea, well, you know, because like everyone's like, well, fuck, how are we getting home from San Diego? I'm like, oh, shit. Now, yeah, that, that's a big deal. You know, I was like, oh, we can win a charter bus. Like, well, shit, what if 150 people want to do this? You know, they, you know, so it's like and then and then there's that issue with the uh, Saints. Uh, what's it called the air force i mean the the, the military brace pendleton. Pendleton. Yeah, camp pendleton where you can't you can't ride 
you either are on the freeway on the uh, you know on on the uh, shoulder of the freeway which i think is legal but dangerous or you go through camp pendleton but but not everyone would be able to get through there so that was just too many logistics plus when i did that ride before uh debuting the se prototype fast ripper I actually did 80, we did 80 miles the first day, 60 miles the second day, and like 45 miles the third day. So that, that's a little too heavy um, for, you know. The average Isaac, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so I think 30 miles a day, strictly on the coast, be really manageable. And, and yeah, I'm really going to start uh, pushing, not pushing it, but, but getting the word out there and, you know, talk with some hotels and see if we get a deal. And yeah, it'll be like a weekend, you know fun thing and then 30 miles a day is a lot more manageable we have time to everyone kick it in the evening and we'll be at the beach and stuff craig did yeah. 30 miles last night with damon dayton so yeah that's easier to do well yeah but 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 add a hundred possibly 150 more people and then you know how late you are leaving and then you're going through la and like, hey let's get a picture at the beverly Hills sign hey hey you know what let's go ride down rodeo drive Hey, we gotta all go go get a picture in front of Man's Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. You know that that's gonna you know then all of a sudden your your thirty your your quick thirty miles is seven hours. One hundred percent. I but but seven hours of fun. I I'm down. I know I know uh, our friend Cat, uh, who who was our reporter for the hoedown, is down to do this. Uh, so her and Mikey are gonna do it. I think uh, I think Craig could talk me into showing up down there. Uh, I want to you know, do it. So, I, I can show up for at least one of the 30 miles. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, I have invited you to my birthday, which is in December. So maybe we can just do like one day. Uh, we can have that be like an honorary birthday ride. Even Birth if I just put balloons on my bike, I don't care. <laughs> Birth birthday cake. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, I am down. I'm down, but also then I'll, you know, we'll finish up in a second, but also with that ride, because it's so centrally located as far as anyone in Southern California that we're going through LA, we're going through mid LA, and then we're going through Orange County, you know, it's like, so a lot of people that aren't, aren't doing the three days though, I'm sure people are going to meet us like, you know, because I'll post up when we're leaving, hey, we're leaving at 10 o'clock a.m. from this hotel and I, I bet you, fuck, it could be 100 to 200 people that just roll in that day. Oh, it's going to be more than it's going to be. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, have, I don't think the numbers you're quoting are not going to be what you're going to get, dude. Yeah, and, add a never, zero, especially when yeah. you're bringing it down from fifty to thirty. They're like, oh, add a yeah. zero. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Anytime we do a ride out, it's like uh, one of my quotes is, "Dude, I don't know if there will be, you know, fifty people or five hundred or or fifteen hundred. I you, you have no fucking idea." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. Well, we we recently interviewed your friend Tom. And so, uh, I, yeah, I think you could probably, oh. based off of what we learned from him, dude, uh, yeah, you're going to have more, <laughs> 1,500, well, not 100. I actually talked to him about that. And he's like, he's like he, yeah, he's like, dude, you're going to have 70 people come down from up here alone, you know? Yeah. You know, but how, how awesome of a weekend is that, you know, just a weekend and, and, and just being able to see part of California you've never seen. You're riding, you're riding along the coast in an area, you know, maybe you drove by the freeway on the 405, but you never, you know, crept along the coast right there, you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it dude here's the thing you are the the director of se bikes but like your passion for bikes is obvious uh you know i don't i don't see any other brand brands like hey we're just gonna do this come if you like no one's doing no one's doing that um so just as a as a fan of biking in general and and the openness of bike life dude i appreciate what you're doing man i mean it's, it's just super super dope like everyone's welcome come hang out go ride your bike have some fun, see stuff you've never seen um, for no marketing reason other than, you know, to ride bikes with your friends that you have not maybe met yet. So that's dope. Yeah, I'm all yeah. in for that. Yeah, no, it's going to be cool. I actually, I got a message from uh, one of the bike life kids out in Philly, R R Rosati. I'm sure you've probably seen him. He does a video, a lot of video. He hit me up today. He said, Hey, I, I, I'm down. I want to come there. I want to book hotels. I want to, uh, yeah, let me know. I was like, hey, let, I said, let's talk next week. I know more, you know? Rosati's but, uh, a baller, dude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but, but yeah, we may just get kind of random and then we'll bring some of the crew. I'm actually thinking about doing a contest. Um, uh, I don't want to say what we're going to do yet, but, but a contest for the crew, the SE crew riders, you know, and be like, Hey, the top three or whatever, four that win this contest, you know, are going to be, uh, you know, we'll fly out, you know, cause we can't fly 15 riders out every single event we do, you know, but we'll bring a handful of them. Dope. 
Yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, you got you got plenty of them in California. I know my friend Matt Ricard yep. uh, would love to be there, uh, and so would probably Jacob Santos. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Well, th those are like the get the givens, you know. They're, yeah. they're, I'm sure. I'm sure they're, they'll be coming. Yeah, and maybe we end up getting getting an Airbnb or a couple Airbnbs, and then there's a hotel. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see what we do. Super stoked. Well, thanks for letting us hear more about the uh, plans. Follow Todd Lyons at Todd Lyons on Instagram, Todd Lyons on Facebook, SE uh, was on, on, if you just type SE racing, SE bikes on Instagram, you'll find them. Um, but yeah, man, follow, follow all those social follow eighties BMX Craig and big bike BMX. I'll be promoting the shit out of the, the LA ride, the, uh, the coast ride. Um, Todd, thanks again, man, for hanging out with us. Please, please, please tell your wife, um, we appreciate it because we want to have you back. And honestly, I don't want her to kill me. So uh. <laughs> All right. we'll, we'll, we'll do. Yeah. And same, same to you. If you're in, if you're in the same predicament as I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, well, she's going to bust in here in a second. I close the door. So hopefully like I would get beat up on camera. So where them, where them goddamn truly is at. <laughs> yeah. They're gone. Exactly. <laughs> All right, man, we'll let you go. I'm going to hang out with Craig. You can hang up Todd. Um, right. we'll talk to you in about a week and, uh, man, thanks for hanging out, brother. All right, man. Peace. Later, guys. Later. See you, Todd. Dude. Right on. Man. What do, you, what do you think of that, man? That's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things that, you know, piques my interest. It, it, it definitely, like, I want to know how things work, you know, just naturally inquisitive about, you know, the things that Todd was talking about, how do, how collabs come together, um, who has what say in it, um, what, type of involvement does the other does the brand want you know they just want to say hey just make a bike put our our stuff on it or no we want to be involved we want to resurrect a a bike that we haven't seen for a while and we want to you know collab with you and, and getting that bike back into the scene and, and putting you know our branding on it so it's like a true a true um collaboration of i dig that dude yeah thoughts like, and ideas man i i think i think you're on to something there because like it it makes me so you know excuse me, SE has done really cool collaborations, obviously, right? Um, some I'm really into, some it just piques my interest. And then you, you, you hear about the backstory where like, you know, someone like a Travis Barker is the one that's actually doing the design. It's not just like a, you know, some random intern that it's their summer job to get a collab bike made. And they're just like, you know, here's our logo. Here's your logo. Make something cool. See you later. Yeah. But, you know, and of course I'm thinking like, you know, as you no, know, we're, we're we were looking at DC from back, what, 2007, 2008, right? Yep. So then it's like you're almost stepping into unknown territory as far as what can this do? Is this going to be something that's just built based off passion and wanting to be a part of something um, to today where I'm thinking like, and I said it in, in the interview um, or discussion with Todd, like how many brands now hit you up? You know, right. how many brands are like, we see what you have going on in social media. We see this new... Um, this new culture of, of BMX and bikes and, and everyone involved. And we see the demographics of folks who are involved, the age groups and stuff. We want our, who knows, X Acme logo Dude. on your bike, but they're not, they're not in the bikes. They won't just want to be a part of, you know, the exposure. Yeah, dude. Okay. So here's, here's what struck me when he was talking um, to think about like, you know, when, when way was like, you know, Hey, we're, we want to do this thing. Like, Way's almost like he's responsible for the the retro bike series. If you if you kind of look at it the way Todd, if if I understood what Todd said right, he's like you know, our like Redline had done it and resurrected like an like a a, a retired and I'm air quoting in my hands for you that are listening on iTunes, but like a retired brand or a retired thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And he's like, we, we like let's resurrect the PK. You know, and and what a gamble, dude, if you think about it, because he had to then at that point, they're like, yeah, man, I believe in this so much that I will buy some of like I'll put in for it. I'll, I'll go in on this with you. Right. Yeah. No kidding. And, he, and and, you know, Damon was Damon Way was like, dude, I want to obviously he has passion. He has a history with BMX. And he's like, dude, I want to bring this back because something with him was like this. This is cool. And I want to be a part of it. Right. You bring you bring your bike your bike back. I'll put my 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 branding on it, and we'll both have a good time. Right, and people will love this shit. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, because you like when you talked about the tissue paper that was like the original sketches for you know, like 
that's someone that's not so that's that's not a casual brand that wanted to work with you that's someone that's like man i love the pk i love the quad you know what i mean like that yeah because you think about that it's like uh, you know putting putting a design on the tissue paper is another step right another it's a detail that also if if you're going to get down to brass tacks there's a cost to it so this you know it's not like hey we want to put out a bike that our margin's going to be this and that, no we want to put out a product that's dope that blows fans minds that blows your mind and it's like you open the box and there's the on the shoes and boom you got the the blueprint for the pk yeah incredible man yeah it's it's basically like someone it's the coolest thing for someone like me that's like average like i'm basic as shit but <laughs> but here's you're, the thing. you're better than that homie I'm barely basic. I'll okay. tell you that. Okay. Right. So, but, but the thing about it is like, you have someone that has like enough, I have ideas. I don't have money. And so when you see someone that's like, I have the financial backing to do this, I'm just going to make something I want when, when like, cause if I think of making something, I think of how much it's going to cost. You get someone that that's, that's on D ways, like his level. And he's just like, He's not thinking how much this is going to cost. He's like, how can I impress myself? You know what I mean? What do I want? What's yeah. going to check all my warm, fuzzy boxes? Yeah, exactly, dude. I don't think money equals ingenuity and not at cre all. creativity. No, um, there's tons of companies that you're, you know, you look at something and you're like, wow, with all the resources you have, that's what you came up with. I just think, like I said earlier, I mean, his 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 passion and his history like dictated how cool he wanted it to be. And like you said, I want to impress myself because everyone else would be stoked on this too. Hopefully, you know? Right. And, and it did, it totally was stoked. So it's literally one of those things where like, I almost want like to find him and just, you know, like send him a Christmas card and be like, dude, thanks for 2007 and eight and nine, because right. now here I am in 2020 and I get to ride dope ass bikes that probably wouldn't be here. Had you not had this idea to throw some se logo pk ripper you know logos on some shoes dude and, not like that todd said that. it it was like the pk and the quad angle came back out um the right afterwards you know the om duro not that it was gone but it was like had new it had a new breath in it you know it was yeah it's kind of like did d way have a hand in bike life it it sure sounded like it from the way it the does way it huh occurred. it does it just it's like there's you look at people that like, basically like, I mean, I look back and you, you, you look at like, you can't say, you know, if you look back at the roots of, I, I just look back at my freestyle roots. Right. Yeah. And you can't pin it on RL. You can't pin it on Bob Harrow. You can't pin it on buff, but you can definitely see influence from, from all of these greats. And then you just look back and from what I'm hearing about this story, it's just like the influence that was like, you know, he, he just had an idea. Hey, Todd, you know what I mean? And, and the way it sounded, Todd's like, you know, well, Redline did it. it maybe it, it'll work. You know what I mean? Like, wasn't that crazy how he said he left, he left D-Way in his inbox for a couple of weeks. Like, I don't know, man, what the hell's going on? I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. Right. You know, right. Was, Could you imagine you, you just, you just get the gig. Right. You know what I mean? And you're like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> here's it. <a> <laughs> And, and here's the thing, you guys. I always say I'm not a Todd Lyons fanboy, but I respect the shit out of what Todd does. And and I just think of like, if I just took over a job and and he, he already described beforehand, like he took this job because BMX was kind of struggling. And so he they're like, hey, you know BMX, you know our bikes, you know our brand. Um, you know, can you, can you just like do something with it? You know what I mean? And, and it was almost like, you know, Todd's like, you know, I'll give it a shot. You know what I mean? Like, cause, cause you heard him talk about before. He's like, I took marketing at like the JC. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? like, but, well, and he's talked before. Remember in our, in our previous uh, conversation with him. Yeah. He was, he was like, you know, he took over because, you know, the, the parent company was like, Todd, you obviously know BMX, you know, a lot about what, what's going on and you got your finger on the pulse. Why don't you take over? And the bikes before Todd took over the SE bikes, you know, pre 2007, eight, whatever. It was weird. It's what it wasn't even weird. They're just, they were for no better terms. They were kind of just bland. They were vanilla. 
you know, and, and not saying that they weren't made by bike. They weren't made by they, people that rode 20 inch BMX no, or history. No. And I think they saw that and they were like, we want a resurgence. We want to yeah. breathe some fresh air into this brand. And that's what they wanted Todd for. So of course, you know, his first, or, you know, one of the things he's doing is he's taking huge risks. Like, okay, I'll do this. And it, it paid. And then div- you get that email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get that email like, <clears throat> Hey man, I want to do this thing. And you're like, Oh God damn it. Like huh. shit. You know, do I, do I go like, cause at that point he has to go back and pitch. All right. My first, your first big pitch is like, like if we put this in another term, right. You're yeah. like, okay, you, you work <laughs> for Nike and you're like, I want to bring back the Cortez, you know what I mean? Right. Or I want to bring back, or you, here's a better one. You work for like Reebok and you're like, I want to bring back Velcro. Right. The you know double, what I mean? The double Velcro top. The double Velcro, because I have a feeling kid, like these kids that grew up with that are going to want this shoe. Like, could you like a fly on the wall on that on that call to try and pitch that shit? You know what I mean? Right. And Todd's over here, like, all right, well, you know, it, in my mind, in my fantasy world, where I hear this, I hear like Todd going, like, you gonna pitch in on this or you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like the dude that shows up at the party and goes, like, man, you know what we need? We need some trulies. And then people are like, you gonna pitch in on that, dude, or what? You yeah. Know what I mean? Like, cool. You gonna throw me a 20 spot or what right exactly like are you in or no right so. like, dude what a cool story i i loved i love talking to todd about this stuff tonight that was great yeah man and you know what the the design and not only the the design right of the bikes he was talking about where they put the uh, limited edition stamps you know he's going over you know the input that the these brands have but it's like in my mind with thinking about what he gets pitched with today it's like there's no he doesn't have a team of people vetting companies it's todd it's todd (laughs) so with everything he's got going on right and all the noise that's going on in the background he's also one of his boxes that he's got in in a compartment of things is like uh collaboration and brands and and which one to pick which one not you know it's got to be phenomenal uh, the 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 amount of um other brands that he has you know hitting him up i mean what what would be your take on it you you kind of work with brands you understand you know that so you know would would you how how would you vet that on your by your you know as as the director of the of a company and stuff i mean of course you, i mean you can get hit up by huge brands with huge capital huge huge um resources a lot of legacy let's you know like a, a software hard, company dude. or something yeah it's hard i would t- i would say like okay so um you know I, I in my in my day-to-day job i work for a large company and there are people that that you think of just for spokes like bringing them on for to be a spokesperson and then you think of like do you want to partner with somebody and, and do something and you're like there's so many scary variables of like I really hope this person doesn't, uh, you know, misstep in the midst of our collaboration. You know what I mean? Cause like, I mean, there's so many things that can go, that can go wrong. A public doesn't, doesn't get it. Doesn't like it. The person or brand missteps and does something really stupid. You know what I mean? Cause you're like, okay, you know, don't put out a commercial that's going to, you know, that's going to embarrass us and, and, and put us in, in a bad light. So there's so many things that can right. go wrong. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and it's sure. scary. There's so much money that comes into it and lawyers get involved. And I, I, bro, I'm barely able to keep like schedule of when the goddamn trash truck shows up in front of my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm barely able to get my kids on zoom calls and maintain <laughs> like my responsibilities at home are like fix things that leak or like, like minor broken house stuff. Um, like, dude, I got a pipe outside right now that I kind of did, like, I kind of fixed it, but now I'm seeing like, I kind of didn't. Um, but thank God my wife doesn't know that like, you know, half cup full, bro, bro. the sprinkler leaks at like two in the morning. And like, it's just now starting to show. Cause she's like, what's this mold in here in this, in this planter bed? Cause I didn't fill the hole in. Cause I had a feeling I didn't really fix it. Um, Climate I'm off change. on. I'm off on like plumber land right now, but I'm just saying like, yeah, I'm barely able to handle like doing like minor house fixes, making sure that the trash is outside on like the right day of the week. 
Um, and uh, you know, there's been a lot of Mondays, dude, where I'm just running out there, dude, in my boxers, like waving down the garbage truck, man. And he's just looking at me like motherfucker, like, you know, I'm here every Monday. And I'm just like, I didn't realize, bro. I didn't realize. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, my kids are on, I'm looking at him. Like my kids are on zoom calls. It's a lot to remember. Um, so I can't imagine what Todd's inbox is like, dude, just trying to maintain, like, plus he has to stay current on like, okay, I'll be honest, dude, I'm 47. And like, st- he has to stay on top of like who a good rapper is. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like I'm over here, like ice cube, <laughs> you know what I mean? like yeah. hello, cool. J that guy's cool. Um, d- is, does, does tribe called quest want to do like, is De La soul hitting you up? Cause he's over here hitting like current artists where I'm just like, I have no idea. Well, then, to, you, know, you got to take my it. wife. You got to take into account that the public enemy bike didn't come out that long ago. If you want to speak in terms of how long they've been around right. and that was a hit. The public enemy big ripper is one of the most sought after bikes in we, SC's bike history. Can we just talk for one second to like us imagine opening the email. Yeah. Can we talk for one second? Imagine opening your inbox in the morning and it's like, you see if you see an email coming and it's like Kanye, how do you keep your cool on that? Like, dude, that comes in seven, seven Oh one. I'm replying. Yes, please. Right. You know what I mean? Like, how do you keep your cool and be like, play business savvy sense when you're like, it's, you know, Yeezy wants to make a bike, dude. Yes. We'll do that. Yeah, I mean, that's going to end up being the answer no matter what, <laughs> of course. Yeah, sure. but uh, how long do you let that sit, though? Do, like, I'm thinking like swingers, like, you know, you're so money, Mikey. Do you wait three days? Is it like a girl? Mm. Or you're like, mm, make him sweat for a minute. Right. Maybe I don't want to do it. Maybe on that level. Probably not, because it's just going to, that train is going to, you know, leave the station if if you're not quick with it, right? You would right. think, I don't know. I don't have artists, you know, emailing me, asking me, stuff i'd be like sure why not i would fanboy why out work? all day long yes. yeah <laughs> yeah right how would be I... like hey craig this is kanye i'd be like yes yes sir what would you uh, like yes that's it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i didn't read your email but the answer is yes yeah. <laughs> i don't know what i don't know what you need but uh of course i will do whatever it is i'm looking forward to um talking with todd going further deeper diving into collabs that didn't happen that people are going to be like oh you're going to do a collab with fill in the blank right well that would have been tragic or yeah. a, a train wreck or man i would have loved to seen that there's some I, weird ones there's some weird yeah, we, ones dude we, we kind of know a few but i'm not okay gonna, i'm not going to say a name i'm not going to say it don't say it i'm not going to say it <laughs> but but if you follow our podcast and you follow how this started todd mentioned oh he posted a picture of a brown box, even. Mm-hmm. He like we're not going to name the brand, but he posted a picture of brown box and was like, "I'm going to go on Big Bike BMX and talk about the collabs that didn't happen, like this one." And he posted a brown box. And um, if you notice, that post is gone now, um, because like non disclosure agreements. Todd Todd will tell you everything. That's what I love about Todd. Todd's like, mm, I'll ask permission or I'll. I'll it's better to ask forgiveness and permission. Right. Except for when they hit you up and say, take that down. And then you're like, okay, because you signed a contract. <laughs> yeah. Let you're me... like, remember that thing we had called the NDA? And you're like, yep. They're like, take it down. Yeah. But that, I mean, that dude, that bike, for those of you that remember, because there's going to be enough people that remember what it was, because we all talked about it. Like, I'm not odd. saying it. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying the name. Okay. But it was, it, it, you You look at it and it's like, wow, that's an odd collaboration. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't have, uh, have expected that one to come, you know, across SC's table and they were like, yeah, okay. Paps, Paps is another one that he talked about tonight. To me, I was like, that's an odd one. I didn't know you had to be 18 to get the bike. Why not? I mean, it makes I, sense. I can under- it makes sense. Yeah. But I didn't know that. I didn't know they weren't available to general sales. I mean, Here's what's funny. I've seen two of them. Here's here's what's funny. The writer in me is like, oh, that's dope. Now, my 13-year-old comes home with a Paps, Paps SE. I'll be like, where'd you get the beer bike? <laughs> the beer bike. The yeah. beer bike. You know what I mean? You're like, hmm. You're like, let me see some ID, bro. Right. And look at me. I, I'm a tattooed dirt bag, but I'm over here like, I'm also a dad. Right, right. You know what I mean? So it makes sense to me why you, why you couldn't sell it to like someone under 18. That makes sense. I don't want my kid coming home with like a skull 
like a skull, like a skull, <laughs> skull big ripper. <laughs> Hold on, let me spit this real quick. <laughs> Go for but it. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to have my kid come home with like a, a Copenhagen ripper. You know what I mean? Like, right. So I get it, dude. But like, there's just some random. It's cool, dude. I I love. I will sit here for as long as he has bikes to talk about. I will sit here and listen to the collab bikes all day long. I think. It's I think the it's most fascinating. fascinating. I, I think, think it's, it's a fascinating, fascinating talk. Uh, Jinx, show me Coke. Um, <sighs> sick burn. I'll get you a truly, or or a big gulp or something. But yeah. um, yeah, dude, I, I'm down for this. You guys, I hope you tune in for the rest of these. Um, we're gonna get Todd as often as we can, as often his wife. Uh, and my wife and Craig's wife will let us all hang out uh, and talk about collab bikes uh, in garages. So, um, dude, you know what? I appreciate you guys listening in. We're going to let you go because we're talking your ear off. But, man, thanks for sticking in this long. We appreciate it. Um, leave a comment if you're on YouTube. Leave a comment on the comments or throw a message at 80s, an 80 s underscore bmx underscore craig on instagram if you send me a message uh at big bike bmx on instagram i'll get it but again i'm really dumb about replying to messages yeah I'm and you know what you it. can actually just type in 80s bmx craig straight out like that with no underscores it'll it'll link up to me it'll find me look for the look for the the uh cobra kai logo on instagram that's craig um that's, that's me and, and send him, let us know what you think. Ask, ask the, here's your opportunity to, you know, Craig will be your voice. Craig will ask the questions you want to know, because um, we want to, we want to ask the questions that you want to know as fans. Um, you know, yeah. Here's your, here's your chance. Cause we're going to do another, um, we're going to do another collab talk with Todd. At if least want to know something. We it, have at least two more. We have yeah, at least two more, two more. So hit me up. Let me know what you want me to ask him. And I'll ask him on the show and maybe I'll even shout out your name. Like, Hey, uh, one way Michael wants to know at whatever, or may not be real, may not be a real Instagram. He just made it up. I may, there may be a one way Michael out there is like, bro, don't throw my name out there. Right. Yeah. Uh, don't shout don't, me don't, out. Yeah. I don't want that old man. Old, um, old man. Yeah. One, one, yeah. One way, uh, BS, uh, you know, P port city wheelie crew underscore, cool. Blocks. Uh, Earl, Earl blocks. There we go. I, I'm sure that doesn't exist, but um, yeah, dude, we'll, we'll shout you out. We'll ask your question. Um, what do you want to know about collab bikes? Um, and, and clearly you can tell Todd is an open book about this stuff and he will tell you everything that he's even not supposed to tell you. So ask questions at eighties BMX Craig um, with underscores in between each, but just search for him eighties BMX Craig uh cobra kai logo that's him send him an in uh, just send him a message on the dms he will ask your question for you and uh man let's 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 open this up to everybody i'm i'm because it can't just be us that have you know crazy random questions i want to know what other people think yeah man hit me up and uh like i said we'll get him out there and, and uh from isaac and i thanks everyone for showing up today big bike bmx uh, we want to thank our guests. We didn't get a chance to say enough. Thank you to Todd Lyons from SE Bikes, the director of SE Bikes, for showing up and uh, beginning this conversation about collabs with their bikes and their brand and other brands that they work with. Um, to all of you out there who are here uh, for the first time, if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell there so you don't miss a little uh, a single thing uh, in the future with us with uh, Big Bike BMX. Sorry. And uh, if you're out there on the streaming uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, thank you all for listening to that. And leave your comments. Let let us know what you got. Let us know what you want to hear. Obviously, Isaac mentioned the uh, Todd Lyons upcoming um, collab discussion continuation. We want to know what you're thinking. And just thanks for showing up, man. We appreciate each and every one of you. We love all you folks out there who are part of this show with Isaac and I. And we couldn't be more happy that you're here with us to uh to have fun and have rad times right along with us so thanks for showing up and uh i'm out yeah we'll see you next week guys take care we love you ba -ba